Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I wanted to introduce the CSS framework Bulma. So if you're familiar with something like Bootstrap or Foundation, then Bulma is along the same lines as those in the sense that it allows you to easily create pages using a bunch of different components and it gives you a way of organizing those components on the page. So in this video, I'm just going to talk about a few things that Bulma has to offer. And in the next video I do on Bulma, I'm going to show you how I approach laying out things with Bulma. So to install Bulma, you can go to the documentation here and go to the getting started part and you can use NPM or you can download the code, but instead of doing either one of those, I'll simply use a CDN. I just wanna keep things very simple, but they recommend NPM and it really just depends on your project. So I'm going to just copy the link tag for Bulma for the minimized version of it. And I'll go back to the site and I have an HTML file open here. What I'll do is I'll start the basics of it and I use the wrong command there. So that's why I got the wrong tag should have Emmet. Okay, there we go. Uh, so this is the beginning of an HTML document. I'll, I'll just say testing Bulma. And then inside of the head, I'll put the link that I just copied from that CDN. So the link there. And to see that it works, what I'll do is I'll put h1 class equals title. So title is a class from Bulma. Hello there. And we'll see if it looks a certain way. So I'll go to my index and I'll refresh. I see hello there. And just to verify that it is installed, I'll remove the class. And if this changes, then I know that Bulma is installed. And it does change. So we see that it gets a lot smaller when I remove that class. So we know Bulma is there doing something. If I didn't have Bulma, then it would simply look like a regular HTML header like that. So I'll go ahead and put the link back in and it changes once again. So once you have Bulma in your HTML file, really what you can start to do is just look at the different things that Bulma can give you. So the things that are really important are the components and the elements and perhaps the form too. So let's look at the form first. So if you look at these examples here, these are just different types of forms that you can build with Bulma. And the nice thing about all these forms and pretty much everything in the documentation is there's going to be code right next to it that generates this for us. So if I were to just copy this code here, it's uh, quite long, so let me grab all of it here. Um, okay, so if I just take all of that and paste it into the body there, I should immediately see exactly what they have. So it takes up more space because I'm not putting this in inside of any kind of container, but you can see it looks pretty similar to what they have on the uh, left-hand side there. And if I put this in a container, perhaps it will make it look a little bit better. So div class container, and then I'll move the closing tag to below this code that I copied. And then let's see if it changes it. And it does. So it puts everything in the middle. And that's really one of the first layout things that you'll learn about Bulma. It's similar to Bootstrap, where if you use a container, it kind of centers everything on the page. So instead of everything going fully across the screen, it will center it for you. And if you were to change the width of your browser, emulating different screens, then you see that it changes size automatically because Bulma is responsive. So I'll remove everything but the container so we can keep everything in the middle. And I'll just show you some other things that you can grab. So let's go to components. So we see we have like a breadcrumb, we have cards and they always show you examples of what you can do. So like I'll take this card here and I'll put it inside of my container and then go back to the page, refresh. And we see I have this giant card. And once again, it's taking up all the available space. And if I were to change the width of my browser, it will change automatically. So of course you don't have to have everything take up this much space, but because I don't have any kind of layout in my file yet I get the maximum size for whatever 
component that I'm using. So let's take a look at some other components. We have a drop down, so that's pretty obvious. You get this nice looking drop down. We have a menu here, and it will look just like this on the left hand side. And I'm pretty sure this will look a little funny if it's full screen. So let's take a look. Yeah, so this is what the menu looks like. And of course, there are other components as well, a message, a modal, and so on. And then you have the elements. So the elements, one is a box, then you have a button. So you can think of an element as more of something that is typical in HTML, where I like to think of a component as like a combination of things. So you see a breadcrumb is a combination of links, a message is a combination of two sections with like a title and a content section. Uh, pagination is a combination of buttons and links and so on. Whereas the elements are more of one thing. So, you know, you have a box, but that's kind of a combination of things. But you have a button, so a single button. Then you have a content block, and they have several examples here. Let's see, you have an image, which we all know what that is. Notification, so something that kind of like pops up at you. A progress bar, and so on. So those are the elements that you can use. And I've already shown you uh, some of the form stuff. Of course, you can look at the other things that you can do. They have uh, drop downs again. They have check boxes and radio buttons and so on. So this is just something for you to explore and it depends on what you will be using in your app. So the layouts can be a little tricky. So that's why I want to cover it fully in another video. But basically, there are some things that they give you to help you lay out your page. So the first are columns. So columns are pretty obvious. You can divide your page up into columns. And like Bootstrap is based off of a 12 column system. So this one is using four columns and each have a width of three. You don't have to specify the width if you don't want to, but if you don't specify the width, then all the columns that you add are going to be equal width. So in this particular case, there are four columns. No width is specified, so each column is made to be equal in width, and because it's in a 12 column system, each column will be a width of three. So three times four is 12. So that's one way. And then when you go to layout, they have some other things. So I already talked about the container briefly. Uh, there's a level which allows you to place things on the left-hand side, the middle, or the right-hand side of something. So if you look at the examples here, they have them. And then there is the media object, which is something that is very common across the internet these days. Basically something that has an image to the left, uh, some kind of text to the right, and maybe something below that text. So. If you're on Twitter, this would be a tweet. If you're on Facebook, this would be someone's status. If you're on some kind of forum, it will be a message by a poster. If you are writing a message, it will be your image to the left and then the text that you wanna write and a button to submit and so on. So the reason why they created this media object is because it's very common across the internet and you can nest them as well here. A hero is just something that you can put at the top of the page. So for example, I'll take this hero that says primary title and I will put it into my page. And we see this is what the hero looks like. So just the big banner across the top of your page. Of course, it doesn't have to be at the top, but that's where they are typically found. Uh, we have a section which breaks up your page into sections vertically. So anytime you specify a section, it is going to be uh, spaced properly from the next section. So you don't have things kind of squished together in a sense. Uh, we have a footer, which is fairly straightforward. It goes at the bottom of your page. So whereas the hero goes at the top, the footer goes at the bottom. And then we have tiles, which are a way to arrange things in kind of any combination that you want. So you see here there are three columns, but there are different widths to, or different heights to each one of these boxes or tiles as they're called. And of course, uh, if you look for, I believe, components, you have a nav bar component too. So 
uh, you always have that option, of course. So those are just some of the basic things that you can do with Bulma. I recommend that you check it out more. And like I said, in the next video, I will talk about Bulma more in depth in the sense where you learn how to organize things on your page. I think working with the form, the elements of the components is fairly straightforward, but organizing the things on the page can be a little tricky. So I'll talk about that next time. So that's it for the Bulma part. I just wanted to remind everyone, if you haven't been to my website, prettyprinted.com, you can go there and check out the free courses that I have or the premium courses that I have. I have, um, looks like seven courses and then one for the cheat sheets there. You can check it out at prettyprinted.com. Um, I'm always adding new courses and I'm always updating my courses. So, you know, check it out today and then you may want to come back in the future to see what else I have. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to learn more about Boma or you have questions about Boma, you can leave a comment down below. And that's about it. So thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.